very very good morning to all of you nice to see you coming in for a topic which is not only serious it's you know people who do not behave nicely people who create issues people who cause a lot of interpersonal rift all these things in the normal course we don't even want to talk about such thing we want to avoid it as much as possible if i am not getting in i am not being confronted with any such relationship if i don't have any close person in my life who is making things difficult for me then i like to just be relaxed and be in that comfort zone and say that let me not get into all these uh, uh, things yeah maybe somewhere out there something happens i am not going to get into it these type of uh, uh, things generally happen so those of you who have logged in today i'm really happy that you are giving consideration to the fact that this can happen any time and we need to be prepared those of you who have had exposure to things like what we are going to discuss today this narcissism all the more reason that you need to understand it in depth beyond your individual personal experience we need to look at it from a wider perspective those of you who have been fortunate enough not to be confronted with such a horrible situation let us be mentally prepared it can happen to you sometime or it can happen to somebody known to you and you can give them support if you are more knowledgeable about it one of the reasons why i picked up this topic today was because of late i've been hearing a lot about this you know word called narcissism this person has a narcissistic personality this person suffers from a narcissistic personality disorder so a lot of this thing have been floating around as you know anything which starts trending as they say suddenly becomes a fashion you remember the time when one or two film actresses said that i have gone through depression and suddenly depression became a very fashionable thing everybody wanted to show that they are depressed and they are going to therapists and all that so like that you know every now and then something new or the other <clears throat> keeps coming in of late i have been hearing this thing called uh, narcissism which is going on left right and center so that is one of the reasons why i wanted to have this topic today for us to understand that while it does exist we need to look at it in a little more rational manner and not just get carried away by this uh, thing as you know in the realm of mental health there are no diagnostic tools okay if i break my leg the orthopedician can show me an x ray which very clearly shows where the bone has been disrupted or shattered or disconnected and therefore he says this is the treatment that has to be done if i develop diabetes my diabetologist does you know, blood tests and shows me these are your blood sugar levels this is what uh, your fasting blood sugar is this is for post perennial it is this is the variation so based on that he says that if you have to take this medicines or insulin for the rest of your life also i happily agree but unlike physical health in the realm of mental health there are no diagnostic tools no mental health professional psychiatrist can do some blood tests x rays mris and show you that this is what you are suffering from and that is the reason why this area is so sensitive so delicate to handle if you feel that somebody is becoming narcissistic and you tell that to him it will only you know evoke more anger from uh, him more resistance from him he will not so easily accept and say oh yeah good that you reminded me i should do something about it right isn't it it doesn't happen that way anyway the point is that narcissism definitely does exist it exists all around us it can be people from any background any educational qualification any social strata any type of upbringing and any type of relationships with people it can happen anywhere okay. the other thing incidentally that i've been hearing quite often of late is people who claim that i am a victim of uh, this narcissistic personality disorder 
you know, they have uh, started off with this thing of saying, he is narcissistic, I am an empath. This has become another common note. That this person is narcissistic and I am an empath. As I have been telling innumerable times, this word called empathy is very, very misunderstood and people use it left, right and center without even realizing what exactly it is. So people who say that I am an empath have somehow, you know, I feel sorry to be a little critical, but I feel that they are just trying to take on that victim role. They are trying to say that I am OK, you are not OK. I am the sufferer. I am at the receiving end of somebody's bad qualities. Let's not get into that victim role. Let us keep ourselves aloof for a minute and think in terms of this person who seems to be having certain difficulties in fitting in with society or interacting with people or building good uh, relationships. So I, for one, am a person who does not like to put labels I do not know who to label as narcissistic personality disorder and who to say that, yes, he shows narcissistic behavior or attitudes. The dividing line is very, very, uh, you know, thin. So as far as I am concerned, I am not so bothered about putting that label. Is this person suffering from NPD? narcissistic personality disorder or this person is not suffering let's not go into that my concern and i would like you all to make it your concern is to look at the reality what actually is happening and what we can do to improve the situation please understand that that is the most important uh, thing to keep in uh, mind okay now what is this npd that they keep talking about narcissistic personality disorder you know it is definitely a mental condition. It is definitely a disorder. The basic uh, thing about it is that it uh, makes a person have an inflated sense of own importance, a deep need for excessive attention and admiration. Person has troubled relationships, lack of empathy for others. But at the same time, I want to tell you that behind this mask of extreme confidence lies a fragile self-esteem, which is vulnerable to the slightest criticism. Now, as I told you, it can be a trait. It can be an off-on situation. It can be that this person shows this narcissistic tendencies only towards one or two very close people and not with the uh, others. So if you understand that it is a uh, spectrum, let us list out what are the typical characteristics, you know, what are the symptoms, as you may call it, to show that this person has this narcissistic tendencies, whether it is an NPD or not. So I asked Anish to make a nice little, you know, slide as we always do, so that in one shot uh, on bullet points, you can get it, you can even take a screenshot if you want, if you want to preserve it. So first thing is that I have made out a list of all the possible symptoms. Remember that. Hmm? It's not that the person has to have all these uh, uh, symptoms, but these are the possible symptoms out of which if a person is showing majority of them or number of them, then we know that yes, this person has narcissistic tendencies and we need to do uh, something about it. Starting off with the uh, thing that, you know, among the multiple intelligences, a person with narcissism generally has very good intrapersonal intelligence. That is, what is best for me? What are the decisions I should take? How should I ensure my success regardless of what anybody else thinks? So that one uh, multiple intelligence out of those seven, eight uh, of Howard Gardner, this one is very, very sharp. You will notice in people who are showing narcissism. They have an exaggerated sense of self-importance. They think I am a very important person and therefore they want constant and excessive admiration. They want everybody else to be looking up to them. They also expect to be 
uh, recognized as superior to the uh, to others that i am this i am that i have done this they even fantasize about success power brilliance beauty they have these type of you know uh, things that they feel that they are better than uh, others they believe that can only associate with special people they have this tendency to look down oh this fellow is good for nothing this fellow is not doing anything great etc very often you will see that they monopolize conversations they look down upon people they consider inferior and they say i will tell you what i want this is what it is and all that and because of that they expect special favors unquestioning compliance with their expectations and whenever the opportunity presents itself they take advantage of others to get what they want they have either an inability or an unwillingness to recognize the needs and feelings of others they either do not have it or they are not willing to understand acknowledge and recognize that other people also have feelings other people also have needs they turn a blind eye to them they are envious you know of others and believe that others envy them whether they envy or not because i am so great other people are envious of me they feel jealous of me which in turn makes them arrogant boastful pretentious and they insist on having the best of everything so in a nutshell this is what you know people who are tending towards this narcissistic personality or behavior and all that these are the type of symptoms that are uh, there as i mentioned thin it is like a spectrum which goes from one end to the uh, uh, other also one very interesting thing about people who exhibit narcissism is they generally turn uh, you know, tend to be charismatic charming they create create such a positive image of themselves people looking at them actually get attracted they feel oh this guy is so great they try their best to create that positive image in uh, themselves and because of that some of the people who are very close to them they don't even realize this dichotomy and they don't know what is true and what is not uh, uh, true what is the real self of that uh, uh, person and to reinforce that thing generally what these people do is they surround themselves with others who are willing to pamper their ego who are willing to acknowledge them praise them and say yes you are great those other people may be having whatever their own you know reasons or their own vested interests but they make sure that they are surrounded by such people to reinforce to themselves that see i am not just boasting i am not not being egoistic see a b c so many people around me they say these things about me so i am that uh, thing and because of that you know their responses to people who try to be nice to them or who are good to them that those responses can be quite problematic so here you are a list of a few uh, points which normally you will see the type of behavior or responses of people who are uh, narcissistic starting with the fact that they become impatient or angry when they don't receive any special treatment they do not have that patience to show that you know, others can also have their uh, needs so they become very impatient they get angry when the, they don't get that special uh, uh, treatment they have you know very significant interpersonal uh, uh, problems and they feel slighted you know they feel that uh, you know they are not uh, um, getting the best of what uh, they uh, uh, want okay they react with rage or contempt and try to belittle the other person to make themselves su feel superior 
Offense is the best form of defense. So push the other person down, make the other person feel miserable, make the other person feel guilty. And then I will be safe and I will be up on my own uh, you know, pinnacle. They have difficulty regulating their emotions and behavior. You'll find this person very calm, quiet, soothing, sitting in one place and interacting very nicely. And suddenly he'll go off his rocker. He'll blow his top. He'll start becoming very, very angry and this and that. And you'll wonder everything was okay. There was hardly any provocation and without any provocation, why did this fellow jump off into these uh, type of uh, um, uh, behavior? They have uh, uh, major problems dealing with stress and adapting to uh, change. When some change has to come in, when they have to adapt to something and they have to oblige others, they find it very, very difficult. They want to stick to their own way of uh, uh, thinking. And surprisingly, they also feel depressed and moody whenever they fall short of their own uh, expectations. These are the things which uh, Anis is now showing you on the uh, uh, slide. Can you uh, go down? Yeah, they feel depressed, moody because they fall short of perfection. And the funny and interesting thing, this is the bottom line of uh, the reaction of many of these people who you know, have this tendency to be narcissistic. They have secret feelings of insecurity, shame, vulnerability, humiliation. So somewhere deep down, there is a conflict going on within them. They will not admit it to anybody. In fact, they will put up such a mask and such a defense that you will never think that this person has any doubts about himself, but actually as a fact, they do. These are the type of, uh, you know, uh, responses that uh, come in. Now, I was mentioning to you that there is a dividing, you know, the uh, actual uh, uh, disorder and people who have these uh, uh, tendencies. While we as Lay people need not get into the technicalities and all that. There are very good qualified mental health professionals to take care of it. But since we are on the topic, I just thought I will share with you a, a uh, you know sort of checklist which has been made out. Do you know that uh, there is this American Psychiatric Association mm -hmm. which brings out what they call as a diagnostic and statistical manual. And they keep upgrading it. Now we have somewhere at DSM-5, the fifth version of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Now in that, they lay down a lot of things which are generally accepted by mental health professionals all over the uh, world. So what does this DSM, that Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, tell us about Narcissistic Personality Disorder? They say that anybody who shows <coughs> at least five out of these nine qualities shown below, that person can be labeled with NPD. So this is how they do it. I am not saying that I agree 100%. I'm not saying you have to agree to it. I just want you to be aware of it. We will work on the individual people, how to work with them, how to cope with them, how to help them to help themselves, all that we will do. But I just want you to be aware. The first one is a grandized sense of self-importance. I've already mentioned that to you. The next is a preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance. I'm going to be a multimillionaire. I'm going to be the CEO. I'm going to be this or that. I am that real handsome or good looking or beautiful uh, uh, person. I am the person who can give this ideal love. And, you know, anybody who I bestow my love in is a very, very fortunate person. Those, uh, you know form of uh, uh, thoughts they um, have. They have a belief that they are uh, uh, special, unique, and can be only understood or he, they should associate with high uh, level people. I mentioned this to you also, and DSM has very specifically mentioned this, that the person who is narcissistic has this belief that he is special, unique, etc., and he should be at that level. 
they require excessive admiration anywhere and everywhere they go they are looking for people who will admire them and who will say oh he is so great he is such an achiever he is this and he is that then they have this sense of entitlement as they say that i am entitled i deserve this 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 because i am so great because i am such a great achiever and because i have done so much in life i have this entitlement they are interpersonally exploitative what does that mean taking advantage of others exploiting in relationships putting the other person down putting your own interests above and exploiting them in a nice manipulative manner so that i always land up at the better end of a relationship then dsm says narcissistic people lack empathy they do not have that basic skill of being able to understand what is going on in the mind of other people what are the wants and needs what are the emotions of other people they are neither interested nor do they have the skill to uh, you know, empathize with uh, others then dsm says they envy others or believe that others are envious of uh, him this also i mentioned to you shows arrogant haughty behavior and attitudes these are the nine points which dsm has uh, labeled for people and they check out so what the clinical psychologists and such people do is they check out based on what the person will is saying what the family members and others are saying and what they are observing and they come to a conclusion and that if this person has five or more of these then we know that this person is suffering from the np uh, the uh, narcissistic personality disorder and then i also want to tell you how does this happen people very often ask me is it genetic how does it uh, happen what is the exact cause of this uh, uh, thing so while as i mentioned to you in anything to do with mental health the lines are very blurred nobody can say with 100% confidence but i have compiled a few very basic points firstly let us understand that the exact cause is still not known to scientists there is a lot of research still going on on that okay but the disorder may be a result from a combination of factors what are the possible things that could have led to this one is childhood trauma physical sexual or verbal abuse can make a person can please underline that not necessary that every victim of child abuse becomes a narcissist but there is a possibility that that will affect the uh, person what about the early relationship with parents friends relatives that affects a lot if somehow the person has seen uh, during the early days the type of relationships with parents with friends with relatives there is also a possibility of something genetic it has not been proven beyond doubt but if the if some narcissism does run in the family there is a tendency there is an inclination for the person to be become narcissistic some way of you know taking precautions hypersensitivity to texture noise light in childhood if a person becomes restless angry irritated about small small things cannot tolerate this cannot tolerate that that person is possibly headed towards becoming a narcissistic personality as a person you know grows and of course the personality temperament all these things play a very big role so what why i showed you this is to help you to understand that we mean when we say narcissistic personality or what are the type of uh, things to be aware of and what are the type of symptoms or whatever you see in uh, people how to become aware of uh, that at the same time as i always tell more than the labels and more than you know saying that this is there or statistics what percentage of people suffer from npd and all that ask a person who is a victim of somebody with narcissistic uh, uh, traits 
she will say, how does it matter to me whether narcissism is in 7% or 70% of the population? I know what I'm suffering because I have somebody in my life who is narcissistic and I cannot get away from that uh, uh, person. So because of that, I need some relief. And therefore, I want to end the first half of this uh, uh, program by giving you a, you know, a quick checklist and some basic techniques as lay people, not professional, not doctors or psychiatrists, as individuals, either if you yourself are a victim of somebody's narcissistic personality or if you have that broad mindedness to acknowledge that, yes, maybe I am becoming narcissistic or if you know somebody who is suffering from this narcissism versus a path, whatever it is, then you can help them. How can we do that? Get treatment for childhood mental health problems. While the person is a child, if there has been any mental health problems, either the child goes into depression or the child starts throwing too many tantrums or the child starts you know, becoming violent with uh, um, others or starts stealing things and doing unwanted uh, things, please ensure that you get treatment for that. Don't neglect it saying that he is just a child. At the same time, do not give in to tantrums. Whether you are talking about a child or an adult, tantrums never help. If the person is showing tantrums, learn to be assertive and try to nip it in the bud. Learn healthy ways to communicate, cope with conflicts. The healthiest way is what we call as assertiveness. If people around this person can be assertive, they don't argue, they don't fight, they don't raise their voice, but they don't break down and cry and become submissive and passive. They learn healthy ways to communicate and to cope with the conflicts that arise because of this person's tendency. Similarly, don't hide or protect his behavior. I know so many family members, including most of often wives, they try to protect the person. They don't allow anybody to know that this is what he is behaving. They cover up for him. And by doing that, they are further encouraging this type of uh, behavior. So whatever happens, face up to society, start involving your extended family, your best friends and all that, and tell them that this is what is happening. At the same time, Please don't feel guilty. So often I have counseled people who have been at the receiving end of a, a narcissistic person. He hits me, but I think I provoke him. I should not have said this, this, this statement. I think that is what angered him and that is why he got violent with me. You have to shake out of that guilt if you want to help that person. At the same time, Insulate yourself and protect yourself. You have to stop being guilty. And if it is your partner or if it's a close family member, please confront him at the earliest. Because if you do not do that and you go on and on suffering with just that hope that things will change, it can lead to what they call as post-traumatic stress disorder. You may get into that. Remember that there is no medication for narcissism. Even NPD, if they call it, barring a few medicines, maybe to calm the person down or something like that, which are only symptomatic, there is no cure uh, from the medical point of view. So it's only psychotherapy which uh, helps. Talk about both going for therapy. The person who is showing this behavior and the person who is suffering because of it. If as long as possible, both can do. A lot can be done through counseling and psychotherapy. And finally, let go physically or emotionally. Make long-term plans how you are going to overcome and move on with life, trying to keep this thing aside, trying to accept it, trying to cope with it, or in the worst extreme case, breaking off that relationship as a bad dream and moving on to what they want to do. So these are some of the very basic, very simple, but highly effective ways by which we can deal with it. It's not impossible. 
I know it's difficult. I know the people who suffer will say, yes, Ali, it's easy for you to say it. You don't know what I go through. I know. I do try to understand what you go through. And that's the reason why I'm talking to you today. Because I want you to understand that this is what we you are going through. And this is what we need to uh, do. And I am there for you if there is some way by which we can work on these uh, things. So we shall work on uh, this thing. And as usual, I'm going to take my well-deserved one minute uh, break and a hot cup of tea. And you have Mira here with you to give you one or two quick. We have a couple of new announcements this time to make and Mira will share that with you and I'll be back with you soon. Yes, hello everyone. So, um, like we uh, talking about childhood, uh, you know, even the pandemic has uh, said uh, when it set in, and uh, it now it's over. But a uh, lot of the repercussions of the pandemic on children, childhood, has still been seen and has been seen. Uh, so we are having our um, course in certification for child child and adolescent development which is starting very soon because a lot of, uh, you know, inquiries are coming for children, their behavior, how do we get out of addiction and how do we enhance our relationship with them. It is also very overwhelming for us that the DCS admissions have been closed now. And, uh, you know, like our purpose is enriching lives through empowerment. And uh, we are... Um, very happy to say that uh, a lot of people have decided to enrich their lives and also other people's lives around them. And so our DCS admissions, uh, we have closed it today. So we will be starting the child and adolescent development certification very soon uh, in about a month or two. And uh, we also offer free counseling please get in touch with the academy and now counseling is not only restricted to coming here we also do it on the phone we have our my counselor which is on the email we do video calls so please feel free to get in touch with us talk to us uh, anything banjara is open to uh, just you know having a conversation and we offer it free so please get in touch with us and uh, i will see you soon again Ah, yes, I am back and I see a lot of nice comments and questions on the chat box and Anis is putting them on for us one by one and I will see how best I can respond to you. Starting with Suchetna saying that such persons will be left alone and other people generally don't like to be in their company or mingle with them. Am I right? No, Suchetna, that's not always the uh, case. Because they build up this charismatic personality, because they impress others, because they show that I'm so great, I can be of help to you, I can do wonders for you, I'm such an influential person, you'll be surprised. A lot of people do gravitate towards them. Till they come to a point where they are at some receiving end and they become the victims of their you know, violence or narcissism or whatever it is, and then only they keep going away. But then there are always new people who keep coming up uh, to the uh, uh, to uh, connect with uh, uh, them. Sureka says, if a person disregards the feelings, ignores the boundaries, and continues to behave in a harmful way, how to emotionally insulate? It varies, no Sureka, from person to person, situation to situation. How much are you sort of you know compelled to be? involved with that person, how close and what type of relationship that you uh, have. But see, as we always believe and uh, you know, even what uh, you know, Gandhiji taught us that nobody can make you unhappy. Nobody can make you feel bad. 
it comes from within always so you have to reinforce this point to yourself continuously that if i want i can insulate even in the worst of conditions read up books like you know uh, dr victor frankel when he was in the german concentration camps what worse situation you can be in that but even there he managed to insulate himself so like that there are innumerable things nelson mandela 30 years he suffered in solitary confinement in the jails of the apartheid of, uh, regime of uh, south africa but he came out of it in a positive manner so there are definitely ways and means of doing it sneha says what kind of baggages do the partner carry after breaking up with the narcissistic person and entering another relationship that's a very good question and if you remember just before i wound up i told you that there is a possibility of the victim undergoing what we call as ptsd post traumatic stress disorder so if this person has been subjugated to a narcissistic person's violence putting down anger whatever he or she has been victim uh, to before entering into another relationship i would strongly recommend go ahead with the healing some people tend to think okay i am lucky now i am out of it i have broken up now this person cannot harm me anymore but that's not true you have to go through the healing process how much in what way to what extent we need to discuss on a personal and one to one uh, relationship ha ah, anand says namaskar ali the one who is suffering always feels about what will others think if they get to know about this and this leads to more suffering how do we encourage them to realize open up and address the issue at the earliest if you noticed in one of the slides i brought out this point saying do not protect the narcissist do not give excuses on his behalf don't say no he is stressed out at work so once in a while he becomes like this but basically he is a nice person no 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 he just you know threatens like that but he actually he is not violent by doing that i mentioned earlier and i'm repeating again that you are actually encouraging that person's behavior you have become an accomplice to that let other people think whatever you want it is in the interest of yourself primarily and also to a great extent in the interest of the person who is being narcissistic that let it come out in the open let others also know so you know that there are you know there is a support system right ah jagori says are these personalities are very selective in showing this particular behavior i mean only an obedient children related subordinates yes it does happen now you know what happens is that the person starts becoming angry violent abusive and uh, you know uh, dominating over others some people allow him to do that some people don't so if he tries it in office and his office colleagues don't encourage he withdraws into a shell in society among friends he tries it and those people put him away or put him down he withdraws he tries it out with his own family maybe his wife or children and they succumb like we have been discussing they protect him they give justification they feel guilty maybe i provoked him the moment they start doing that this person takes over and says this is where i'm going to have my outlets and this is where i'm going to show all my negative tendencies surakha says if a person is constantly escaping accountability and playing the blame game how can we deal with the uh, it is better that initially you say okay fine it is not your fault you are putting the blame but you are also suffering because of that no you are not happy with what is happening around uh, you you are not happy with this relationships you feel that you are not getting your due your importance or your uh, uh, significance right so can we look into what you are doing you may be a very good person you may be doing things with very good intention but if you are not getting results if you are upset and if you are not able to 
get the best out of everything. I don't want you to suffer like this. You're a good human being. You deserve a good quality of life, but let us work towards ensuring that you get that good quality of uh, uh, life. These are the type of ways by which we can slowly get around. You have to be very patient. You have to accept it that many a time it doesn't work, but sometimes it works. Sometimes when it doesn't work, as we have said in the worst case, you can even either mentally you know, insulate yourself, give up on that relationship, whatever needs to be done. Huh. Sri Devi says, I have a counsel. This person constantly feeding the mind that all the relationship fail, though he gives his best. Is this a trait of MPS? As I told you, no, Sri Devi, I don't like to put labels on people. So without knowing the details, without having interacted with the person, I don't want to put a label whether he's suffering from narcissistic personality disorder or not. That's not important. But the fact is, as you just now described, he is living in some sort of a fool's paradise as we think that it is always the other people's faults. I have not done anything. If I have had a series of broken relationship, it is because of each one of those people was bad. I didn't do anything. Here again, we come back to the same thing which I mentioned a minute ago. First, acknowledge. Because if you try to argue with the person, he will give you a long argument saying, no, I can prove it to you that it is not my fault. It is this happened and that happened and all. If you try to generalize or make it logical by saying, come on here, half a dozen people could not have been wrong. Yes, they are wrong. I am telling you they are wrong. I will prove it to you. So don't get into that. Acknowledge it. At the same time, say that you have been a victim. You have uh, you know, suffered so much. I don't want you to suffer further. So even if you are right, and even if all those people have been wrong, can we look at some alternatives or some strategies by which you don't need to suffer and you can have better relationships? Many a time we need to do that, no? If there is some rowdy on the road who is trying to be uh, horrible to you, what is the point in getting into an argument uh, with him? He can get into a physical fight and beat you up. So there's nothing wrong in saying, Namaskara, Anna, you are a great fellow. Yes, what you are saying is right and quietly move off from there, isn't it? The same thing we need to practice, even if it's a person who is close to us. And it can be done. Roshan says, I have recognized a person with this behavior and I am the victim. I have been beaten up lightly by him many times, so I thought it was a friendly gesture. But one day he has boxed my upper arm so badly that I cried with pain. He's a big shot and very rich man. So I have no idea how to change him. My friends say to tell him honestly how I am feeling. But I felt the best way is to avoid him completely. Yes, Roshan, if that person is not an integral part of your life, as in being a family member or somebody very close to you, definitely if it is possible to avoid him completely, why not? Even if that involves a little bit of change in your schedule or activities or whatever it is, it is worth it. Why get into something when you know? And as you have mentioned, it is increasing. When you tolerate it, you know, he would give you one little whack or he would try something and you thought, okay, he's just doing it lightheartedly and he will uh, improve. But on the other hand, when you said that because you are not resisting, because you are not protesting and because you are not confronting him, if you noticed, it is constantly increasing. So why do you want to suffer with a person who is not a very important person in your life? At the same time, I do acknowledge what your friends uh, uh, told you, that if it is possible, when he is in a good mood, when there is no uh, you know, aggression taking place, maybe when you are sitting safely a little far away from him across the table and with other people in between, if you can very gently bring out this thing saying that, you know, I have certain health issues. I get uh, hurt easily if somebody, you know, hits me even playfully. It pains me a lot because I have this muscle issues or whatever you want to uh, tell. And because of that, I feel that, you know, I, I don't think anybody should uh, touch me or uh, be playful with uh, me. I would like to do this, keep this boundary. And I would like to have a good relationship with all of you people. You know, generalizing over the place, but firmly getting that 
message uh, um, across. No harm in trying it out. In case he protests and says, what am I doing? Why are you this? Then you know that he has gone into one extreme where he is not even willing to acknowledge that he is doing anything bad. Then what you said is right. That is better to completely keep away. If by chance he says, hey, come on here. What have I done? Just playfully I was giving you a little back. Yes, I understand. For you it is playful. But to me it affects. Because for whatever reason, you know, because of certain factors, my health issues or my age or my whatever it is, I do suffer very badly because of these things. You know, When somebody uh, just gives me a playful whack also, it pains. I can't sleep that uh, night and that's the reason why I'm saying it. Maybe there's a possibility that the person may change. <sighs> Sneha says, what kind of probable childhood trauma would they have faced? See, the childhood trauma, we have to look at it from the psychological angle. It is not physically what the person went through. Just to give you an example, the person may have been beaten up by own parent or teacher or some significant adult. And most important, there are children who are beaten up and they laugh at it and say, yeah, yeah, I was mischievous, so that's why daddy beat me. And they run away. There are children who feel, I did not do anything wrong. I didn't deserve to be beaten up. I don't know why my daddy, maybe he doesn't love me. Maybe I am not good enough to be his uh, uh, child. Maybe I have done wrong things. Maybe I have never been able to win the love of my daddy. My birth is so low. When that happens, that can leave a psychological trauma. So our concern is with the psychological trauma. It could be sexual abuse. It could be verbal abuse. Person being put down all the uh, time. Battery of the self-esteem. It could be physical abuse. So don't go by that. And that too, don't go by the intensity of it. It's not a question of, you know, I was just uh, hit once. So what? Yaar? Once if he hits you, why are you making such a big this thing? Or I was never hit or I was never sexually abused. But verbally, you know, my elder, my so-and-so used to put me down like this. That happened there. There are so many people who say that they may have said it with good intentions to help you. Take it easy. That is what people tell. But I 100% disagree with that. If there is a childhood trauma, a bad experience, which is unresolved at the emotional level, whatever your age, whatever your stage of life, whatever you are going through right now, you do deserve to work on it and build it back. So that is what you should be doing, right? Pratima says, narcissistic are manipulators most of the time, is it? Yes. Manipulation is one of the techniques which many narcissistic people use because they know that sometimes if they are straightforward, if they give the right, you know, clear uh, uh, signals, then it doesn't uh, uh, work. So very often what they do is that they try to manipulate the other person, including, I mentioned this, I'm repeating again because it's very important, make the other person feel guilty. Tell the other person, I know of people who have been violent and then told the victim, why do you provoke me so much? Why do you make me beat you? Note the words. Why do you make me beat you? Now, what happens to the victim? The victim is not only being beaten or hurt, the victim is also being made to feel guilty that you are the one who provokes it. And I have had innumerable counselees who have come to me and said, actually, you know, it is my fault also that I have been provoking uh, uh, him. I think I should not have said this. As long as I don't mention this, 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 comparatively, he remains very calm. No, that's not the way to deal with a relationship. If at all you have contributed, you have contributed by being silent, by being submissive, by protecting that person's uh, bad habits so that others don't come to uh, know, by bypassing that and again being very normal and very loving and caring towards him. 
that is where you have contributed towards a person becoming more and more narcissistic or violent or you know irrational etc hmm vinita says it's also very challenging to tell them that it requires medical attention how do we convey it to them here i want to again make it clear what i told you uh, earlier that it does not require medical attention though we call it a personality disorder though dsm has you know given this guidelines and has put this label of npd and uh, all these things yet the fact remains that there is no cure for narcissism from the medical angle the only medication that can be given and maybe should be given in extreme cases is to bring down the mood of the person to bring down the aggression in the person anger management whatever you call it yes today thankfully we do have medication for that so if there is a person who is having these extreme cases and if he goes in for that medication at least his symptoms will come down he will not be as harmful as he was now as you asked you know how do we convey to them that you require this sort of uh, anger control or whatever you want to call it again as i told you you come back to talking to the person by saying that i don't want to put labels i don't want to say that you are the bad person or you have been doing anything wrong but your relationship is getting affected isn't it you are not happy with x y z your close relationships so if there is something which can help you to do that the same way as if a person says that you know at the end of the day i get very tired and somebody says take this fruit juice or take this vitamin pills or something it doesn't mean that you are a sick person but it will give that boost it will help you to have an energy even at the end of the day to carry out whatever other responsibilities you have so the same way i am trying to help you with that at the same time let me tell you very clearly that you may not succeed in many 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 cases you will be lucky if you succeed but if you don't learn to give up suchetna says that partners can diverse them <laughs> what about their poor children that's what i keep on telling people no i wish there was some way by which a child could diverse the parents and say you be horrible to me you beat me you do this and i am going to diverse uh, you yes it is a fact that children uh, cannot and therefore if a child has a narcissistic personality person in his life be it a father grandfather teacher any significant adult the child really suffers now you as a concerned adult whatever relationship you have with the child you have to start working to reinforce the child firstly by giving lot of love and affection so that you boost the self esteem of the child giving a lot of positive strokes that you are a good boy or a good girl you have this achievement you have that good you know personality traits your behavior is good you do this very well go on with all those uh, uh, things then work on guilt if it is there again with children the same thing happens a child feels i am a bad boy that is why daddy beat me up so work on uh, the guilt part of it so knowing that he is a child who cannot diverse his uh, you know abusive parent the least we can do if we have access to the child is to you know try and give that type of support in these two three areas at the same time if you feel that the parent because of his personality traits because of his not being able to control his uh, emotions and his behavior is being very nasty to his child somewhere slowly if you can bring in this thing that you know children who are subjected to this sort of anger and violence and all that can grow up to become very difficult children once this child comes to adolescence he can become very rebellious he can create a lot of problems for his uh, uh, parents so in your interest uh, i am requesting you even if you feel that what you are doing is right and what the child is doing is wrong i would still request you are you open to changing your methodology of discipline instead of using this 
you know, violence and put downers and all that. Is there some other way? If you're open to it, I am willing to help you with uh, that. Ha, ah, Saraf Saab says, in every human, there is a humane being besides monster. Yes. So the best way to deal with narcissistic person, good values of humans play a crucial role. You remember I had mentioned in one of the uh, uh, slides that there is, you know, as uh, element, a secret feeling of insecurity, shame, vulnerability, humiliation, somewhere that is lurking in the mind of this uh, uh, person. So if it is possible, if you have that time and inclination and are willing to work with such a person, you can gently help to make the person feel that in your interest, not because I'm saying that you are wrong and you need to be corrected, but for your peace of mind, to enrich your quality of life, can you bring about some changes and give a lot of positive strokes if the person makes even a 10% uh, you know, uh, effort. If the person holds back his anger, his violence, his whatever behavior pa patterns, give a lot of positive strokes. I see such wonderful things. I see you are being so nice. I see that you are doing so good, etc. As long as you continue to do that, perhaps there is also a hope that something can happen. Ha, Jai Guru says, I uh, also, I feel from my experience, NPD happens to the people who have egoistic nature and suffered. Yes, exactly. I mentioned that also and I'm repeating the same thing which Jai Guru is saying, that if there has been some trauma in childhood, if some sort of ego has been hurt and the person is trying to redeem his ego, if the person has got this hidden, you know, self-esteem uh, problems and is trying to strengthen himself, putting on a mask, the person becomes abusive, the person becomes aggressive towards others just to reinforce his own basic uh, um, ability. Ha. Ah. Roshan says, thanks for making me understand what is NPD. Very difficult even to pronounce this word. Exactly. Narcissistic. I don't know why they made it such a tongue twister. As Amitabh Bachchan says, English is a very funny language. They make words more and more difficult, so many things, but it's okay, doesn't matter. As long as we understand the human part of it and as long as we work towards creating that little world around where we work with empathy for everybody, including being empathetic towards a person who is showing narcissistic behavior. Okay, we are uh, coming to the end of the time. Maybe this is the last uh, uh, query that I will answer. Sneha says, do they blackmail their partners like, I will jump off this cliff, I will cut my hand. Yes, it can happen. Not in all cases. In most cases, it is, I will kill you, I will threaten you, I will beat you. It is more of aggressiveness. But once in a while, this also happens. The first thing could be, I will leave you and go away. I will just give up on this. I will not do that. I will not be this. In an extreme case, it can also be, you don't care for me. Nobody understands me and nobody gives me my due and nobody acknowledges all the great work that I'm doing. So I'll kill myself. It can uh, happen. While the chances of such a person actually killing himself are very, very low. Yet, as I always say, when it comes to a question of somebody threatening suicide, don't take it lightly. Only on that one front, you can pamper him and say, no. I don't want to lose you. I don't want you to end your life. You deserve to live in this uh, world. And then move on again to whatever else has to be done. That is how you need. This is a wide spectrum. I'm glad we have had some very, very nice and thought provoking questions and comments, which helped me also to put a lot of my thoughts in order. And as I always do, I learn something from these sessions and I go back and mark these uh, <coughs> things. And that's how I uh, you know, work on these uh, things. So we have come to the end. I take your leave uh, now. And with the announcement of next Saturday's session, which Anis is putting up to show you that we are going to talk next week about 
technology addiction one of the very very important things please tell your friends anybody known to you who is directly or indirectly suffering from addiction to the screens child or adult i will try and give you some very practical inputs and tips on how to deal with uh, uh, it so see you next saturday at 11 o'clock bye bye